In this video, I'm going to demonstrate Cures per model settings. Cures per model settings are going to allow us to have different settings for different models on the same print bed. For example, maybe we have four models on our print bed and three of those are fine with 15% infill, but the fourth one would be, would be better with 40% infill and say four walls. Cures per, per model settings are going to allow us to do that. Or maybe you have a single model that's fine with 15% infill except for one small area that would be better at say 40% infill we can do that too well, let's stop talking about it jump into cure and get to pushing plastic what I have here is four different parts on one bed plate and we're going to play with Cura's per model settings. I'm going to start here in the back. And what I'm going to do is add a support blocker to this model. And you can no notice that it's transparent. I'm going to take that support blocker. I'm going to move it down. And actually, you know what? Let's, yeah, we'll leave it there. I just want to make sure it intersects with the top surface. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to the Cura per model settings and the first thing I'm going to do is click the very first one which is the normal mode or normal model and you notice it changes color to yellow like a normal model it's still hovering in the air we'll slice this and take a quick look at it and we'll scroll on down through the layers and see what's going on going on what I'm seeing is it looks like two models that intersect each other. It has its own walls. It has its own top layers. It looks like it creates a union until you slice through it. And obviously it's two separate models. I honestly have never used that for any reason. I never saw a purpose for it. I'm sure there is one or Cura wouldn't have made it. If anybody out there has an idea of when and why you would use that, let me know down below in the comments. I'm really curious about this. I'm going to stick with this one. We're going to leave it selected. And now I'm going to go to the per model settings. And I'm going to click the second option, which is print as support. And you'll notice the color change. So let's slice and see what happens. Preview. And what we're getting now is it's adding support to the model itself in that area just the one we set up uh, originally the model itself still has supports turned off but we just added support to one area so if you have a model where you feel you'll need a little support that'd be a great way to get it i can see a great use for that i have used it in the past a few times i do like that one let's go back to prepare the next option we have is modify settings for overlaps. I'm going to take, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to come to this model here. So what I want to do is this is a delicate little part. I want to add some strength to this little hook for lack of a better term up here. So I'm going to click the part. I'm going to click a support blocker, click the area where I want it. I'm going to Make sure I'm clicked on the support blocker and move that. I'm going to scale it a little bit. Turn off uniform scaling and stretch it in that direction. What I'm going to do now is go over to my per model settings. I'm going to click the one that says modify settings for overlaps. So I'm going to click that. And you'll notice we get a transparent yellow box, but we get all of these cool options over here where we can modify some of the settings. I'm going to change this wall count to four. In my settings, in my profile, I'm set at two. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to slice this and see what we get. We'll zoom in. Hit the preview. I'll dig down below the surface and see what's going on. That's pretty cool. I like that. What I did was added 
four walls in just this area where the original support blocker is. Everywhere else, it still has two walls. So if you want to add strength to just a particular area, you don't want to increase your walls all around because it's a large model. You want to save time. But there's a specific area where you need some, uh, extra strength. That's a good way to do it. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to hit select settings. And you'll notice that we have the option of picking other options. I'm going to hit infill density. I'm going to close my box. I'm going to set my walls back to zero so it ignores it. You'll notice they're a lighter shade of yellow. That means they're not active unless you type in them. So I'm going to change this one to 100% infill. My profile is calling for 15% infill. We're going to slice. And we're going to take a look at this. And like you guess, we have 15% infill everywhere except this area where it's 100%. Now I could increase the walls and add infill in that area. The part's too small to do that, but you'll notice on every other model that's here, it's still 15%. We still have our support in the back where we added the support, the back part back there. Now I'm going to come to these front pieces. And I'm going to add two, two support blockers at one, at one time. I'm going to add one here. And I'm going to cover the entire model with it. I'm going to hope to cover the entire model with it. And we'll take that. I'm going to scale it. I'm going to turn my uniform scaling back on because it doesn't matter if I go over this time. That's what I want to do. I'm going to click this one. I'm going to add another support blocker to it. I'm going to center that up the best I can. doesn't have to be perfect. Because we're going to scale this one up and cover the entire area. And let's go to our scale. Make sure I'm not touching any other parts as I do this. There we go. Okay, so on support blocker number one, I'm going back to my per model settings. I'm going to click the modify settings for overlaps. I'm going to change the wall count here to four like we did before. Then I'm going to come to over here and I'm going to hit the per model settings. I'm going to select some settings. I'm going to go back down and I'm going to change my infill density here. Close that out. Scroll back down. I'm going to change this to 100%. And we're going to slice. And I find this really nice. We'll scroll, cut down through. And as you can see, I filled this, made this one pretty much solid by increasing the line count, the wall count. Over here, I made it solid by changing my infill to 100%. I can find a lot of uses for that. Now I'm going to come back here. This one I don't use a lot. This one is don't support overlaps, which to me works like a regular support blocker. I wouldn't really have to do anything. So if I turn on my support, slice it, We'll preview this. And I gotta put my layers back up. You'll notice that there's no support in that area. Whoops, that's why, because I hit cooling instead of support. Let's try this one more time. Support. I should get some support on the sides of it. And there we go. Just the area where that block is. So that last one works like a standard support blocker. I turn that back off. Print it as support. Now we'll get our support back for just that area.
works better if you turn the support off. Now, what you also notice is over in this area, the word eraser, one, two, three, and then just one without any number. That's all your support blockers. And now that we have that, you can see I have my support back in just that area. So there you have it. We've gone through all the per model settings. I can find uses for almost all of them. Uh, let me know down below in the comments if you see some other uses for this. I'd love to hear about them. If you made it this far, you're one of the great ones. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash the bell, live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe so I can continue to grow this channel. Thanks for watching.